Hey everyone, I'm Rob. It's Sunday today, so that means it's time to sit down and chat all things ChatGPT and catch up with the news in the week. In the theme of this YouTube's thumbnail, Mr. Smith, we have seen instances of autonomous AI. So pretty big news this week as a GitHub user, Taran Bruce Richards, uploaded a public repo that demonstrates a instance of ChatGPT4 being autonomous. In the example that they provide on their GitHub repo, you can see that their instance of AutoGPT can produce code that is not only syntactically correct, but functionally relevant. Additionally, it can execute the code it generates, making it a self-contained development environment. And on top of that, recursively debug, develop, and self-improve. And this is a pretty huge step towards the field of advancing AI. Now, as consultants, what are some of the insights that I see from this coming down our pipeline? Well, there's quite a few. The first is the skill set evolution, that as consultants, we should be prepared for a shift in the workforce skill set as AI driven development becomes more prevalent. We can help organizations manage the transition from traditional programming to AI generated code, which definitely includes upskilling and reskilling employees. The second is collaboration with AI. So as consultants, we can focus on fostering a collaborative mindset between human developers and AI systems like AutoGPT. We can guide clients on how to effectively harness the benefits of AI generated code while maintaining the human oversight and creativity that is still needed. Remember, these instances, these applications do not replace human creativity and this critical thinking capacity that we have. The third is of course, AI ethics and governance. As we see AI continue to play a larger role in software development, we should consider the ethical implications and potential biases in this AI generated code, especially some of the licensing and royalty things that we see with GitHub Copilot. We can help organizations establish guidelines and governance frameworks to ensure responsible AI use. Also too, there are going to be new business models coming down the pipeline. So the potential for AI systems to develop and test software without human intervention can lead to novice business models and services in the consulting industry. So as consultants, we can explore opportunities and consider how we can adapt to the offerings and better serve our clients in the era of AI driven development. With all that being said, if you're technically inclined and want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description so you can take a look at the GitHub repo. More importantly, you can check out the contributor, you can check out the author, and you can sponsor slash contribute to this project. In other advancements towards AI this week, researchers have released a paper detailing out task matrix AI, which would be a connection of foundational models with millions of APIs for task completion. In the proposed ecosystem, a foundational model could serve as a central system that receives sensory inputs from the environment and generates high level commands. Now, when I think about this, I think that this could be really interesting for, for example, in the development of self-driving vehicles, because we know that one AI model by itself is interesting, but then connected to like an AI ecosystem of different AI models for different things. So one for understanding inputs from the driver, the passengers, other AI models as sensors for the car, um, just as two examples, if those AI models work together in a central AI, AI ecosystem that can execute tasks, I can imagine that the development of AI and self autonomous driving vehicles might be closer than we think. And yeah, that's, that's interesting. I think so. In other agent GPT news this week. Okay. Um, this is probably hyperbole, but I digress. Um, a doctor, Isaac Hane, a computer scientist and physician at Harvard teamed up with two colleagues to test chat GPT four in a medical setting. They found that ChatGPT4 had better clinical judgment than many doctors and could diagnose rare conditions just as accurately as a human doctor. Now, the thing that ChatGPT4 solved was that with a few details about a baby he gathered from a physical exam, the machine was able to correctly diagnose a one in 1000 condition called congenital adrenal hyperplasia. I'm sure my sister would know what that would mean, but I'm sure it's not something that's nice obviously. Now, of course, of course, there is a disclaimer. It's, you know, ChatGPT4 is not infallible. Of course, it's going to make some mistakes, just like doctors. But also the interesting ethical thing that I would be curious about your opinion would be the model obviously has not taken the Hippocratic Oath. So is there a ethical or moral societal issue in that? Um, I guess probably not if you're using it as kind of just like a if doctors are using that just as a backup. But then, of course, we don't want doctors that are just, you know, kind of like, hey, what's your problem? Okay, just put it into ChatGPT4. Okay, yeah, you have an STI. In his book, 
the AI revolution in medicine, they detail out that, of course, ChatGPT4 isn't always reliable and can hallucinate and make up answers leading to incorrect prescriptions, etc. But the book does go on to suggest some potential error catching measures, such as having ChatGPT4 verify its own work and show its work in a human manner or showing its work human style to doctors. Now, overall, this is pretty interesting and in that ChatGPT4 does have the potential to free up precious time and resources uh, for people working in clinics and physicians. And this could allow physicians to be more present with patients. Um, <laughs> based on my experience, I feel like this is, this is a lovely fantasy world, but hey, I feel like we are entering a fantasy world era with all of these technological changes. So who knows, empathic patient-centered doctors could be in the future as well. I'm, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. It's time to pivot away from the medical industry and talk about something even more sexy, which is the finance industry. And in the finance industry, Bloomberg has announced that it has released a research paper detailing the development of the Bloomberg GPT, which has specifically been trained on a range of financial data to support a diverse set of natural language processing tasks within the financial industry. This model will assist Bloomberg in improving existing financial NLP tasks such as sentiment analysis, named entity recognition, news classification, question answering, and more. And what they want to do is unlock opportunities and quality quantities of data on the Bloomberg terminal. If you're interested in reading more, I'll put a link to their press release in the description of this video. And in other news this week, we know that it's harder and harder to distinguish between AI and an actual person. And so that is why WorldCoin has announced that it is interested in creating a world ID. So this would be a digital identity that proves that you are a real and unique person. I'm not sure what if I'm not unique, doesn't matter. Uh, while fully protecting your privacy. Uh, it would be the first token that would be globally and freely distributed to people. I don't know. Now, while this sounds very optimistic and very hopeful, I feel like the pessimist in me is thinking, gee, this sounds like the beginning of some James Bond movie. I'm gonna wait and I will, I will see how this goes from a very kind and far distance. In other news, the word oops was heard around the world as Samsung accidentally leaked confidential information into ChatGPT. The semiconductor division of Samsung had allowed its employees to use ChatGPT to help fix issues in source code. But in doing so, they accidentally fed in sensitive data, including source code for new programs, internal meeting notes, and hardware related information. Whoops. What this means is that Samsung's trade secrets are now OpenAI's intellectual property. This goes to show that we need to read the fine print and of course never put in sensitive information into ChatGPT, please. There's also, very interestingly enough, I wonder if it will become some sort of evidence for the EU. Because Samsung is unable to retrieve or delete this data, it could mean that yeah, ChatGPT is non-compliant with GDPR rules. We'll see. And to end off with some strange ChatGPT news in the week, um, we had a user talk about how somebody used ChatGPT towards them uh, in a dating app. So this user was chatting with an individual and had mentioned to this person that they were seeking a romantic connection with that they were sick. And their romantic connection all of a sudden sent back a tips on recovery, which was a straight copy and paste from ChatGPT. And I wonder to what extent the future of dating will just be language models interacting with one another. I'm kidding. Kind of. And in my life this week, I got a dance mat. So back in the day, I loved this game called Dance Dance Revolution. I would spend a lot of money at the arcade, at the mall, specifically at the movie theater, and would dance my little heart away. And I found a cheap one on Amazon, which I'm really stoked about. And that has been my week. I've been dancing. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I want to wish everybody a happy Easter for those that celebrate it. And if you like this content, please feel free to subscribe. Go ahead, press like. That would mean a lot to me. And yeah, I'm wishing you guys a wonderful, wonderful long weekend. Bye.